Lord, for another opportunity to stand before him and to stand before his people. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, my Hallelujah. Yes, Father, I thank you. Thank you, Father, for the manifested presence, your presence, in our midst on this morning. Father, I thank you, Father, because of your Son, his obedience to you and his love for his people, for your people, Father. We're able, we're able to gather here. We're able to partake, Father, in your goodness. Thank you. Father, I thank you for the anointing of your spirit. For the for I know, Father, that I abide in you and your spirit abides in me. And Father, as a result of the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit, I can confidently declare that I am anointed. I can confidently declare, Father, that I am anointed, Father, not out of arrogance, but out of the truth of your word. Yes. Yes. That I am anointed to preach good news yes. of your kingdom. <clears throat> to declare, Father, that people, not only your people, that people in the world don't have to be bound by the enemy, yes. but they can be free. Yes. Father, I thank you for your holy, holy, holy presence in me. And Father, now I stand before you and I say, Father, be glorified in me. Be glorified through me. Do what you will, Father. Holy Spirit calls me to hear Every word that you speak calls me to see everything that you reveal and show me. So that I, by your anointing, can declare to the people of the kingdom of God what I hear and what I see. <laughs> Hallelujah. What I hear you saying. Yes. And what I see you doing. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Father. Amen. Amen. And amen. I'm going to have to use some glasses here that I think we might have gotten out of Walgreens or CBS. <laughs> the glasses I normally use, I can, I can see and you look like you're supposed to look. So you may find me occasionally looking down over these glasses, looking a little bit weird. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Wanna, I, 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 um, of course I ran this by Apostle yesterday when we was uh, at the men's breakfast. Uh, I had made mention of some of what I will be sharing to you on this morning uh, at our last uh, uh, staff meeting. Um, but I know by Holy Spirit that I need to communicate this to you all on this morning. But I got with Apostle yesterday morning. He uh, uh, blessed it, uh, authorizing me to, to speak this to you. Some months ago I had this dream. And I'm going to read this to you. Uh, uh, and before I say this about the dream, I know I've uh, told, and I'm sure many of you have probably heard not only me maybe speak on dreams, but you probably heard others speak on dreams. And I say this, not all dreams are dreams of God. You know, not all dreams now, but, you know, and we just need to know that. Not all dreams are, but I know this dream is of the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyway, I had this dream some months ago. I saw myself standing at a gas station when, when my immediate attention was drawn to a group of people. Uh, some of the people were standing and some of the people were sitting at what appeared to be a bus stop waiting for transportation. As I looked upon them, I began to declare, in other words, I began to preach, and the thing that was interesting about me preaching to the people that I saw on this bus bench, if you will, uh, at this bus stop, I began to rap what I was preaching. <laughs> that was kind of, 
<coughs> strange to me because I don't rap when I preach. But I begin to, to, to rap somewhat poetically uh, uh, to the people telling them about the kingdom of God and, and declare to them that the only way uh, is through Jesus Christ. Uh, so I begin to declare some good news to them about our Lord and our Savior. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Then immediately I turned to the right. Now they was like to my left and the gas station was over here to my right. And when I turned to my right, my attention then was drawn to the side of that gas station. In other words, it was the gas station was to the left of me as I faced it, where it appeared to become immediately like a like a seashore. The water was rushing up, if you will, against the gas station in such a way. Then I immediately heard a voice, and the voice said, the land has been invaded. The voice said, the land has been invaded. <coughs> then that voice said, come with me. Come to a place where I will reveal to you all you will need to recover the land. He said, the land has been invaded. But I need you to come with me so that I can reveal to you what you need to do to recover your land. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I know that the land that we need to recover is the territory that was given the church. But the church has not fully used its authority. That's right. I'm reminded of the scripture that Christ said to the apostles that I will build my church. And what I build, the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. Mm -hmm. right. Now let's be real, my brothers and sisters. Look in the land. Do it look like the church is winning? Mm. So something is wrong. Mm -hmm. Something has happened. Now, Holy Spirit directed me to some scriptures that I want to use just to kind of bring this thing home and use this as a way of just communicating what I need to communicate to us on this morning. <coughs> 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. Hallelujah. I'm going to give me a little drink of this water. 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. Beginning with verse 1. Hallelujah. Let me begin reading. See, now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag, a city. Ziklag was a city that was given to David by King Achish, who was the king of God. Anyway, on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, they attacked Ziklag and burned it down with fire and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but they carried them away and went their way. <coughs> Verse 3. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was burnt with fire, and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people, oh my God, <laughs> oh Lord, that's what's happening in our country. Yes. Mm -hmm. Some of our wives, some of our husbands, mm -hmm. some of our children have been taken captive. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And the church at large corporately has just stood by. Stood by with the authority within them. Mm -hmm. But not utilizing that authority. That's right. So David and his men 
came to the city, and there was burned with fire, and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people were with him, lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. Now that's some crime. And David's two wives, Achnoam and Jezreelitis, and Abigail, and the widow of Nabal, well, Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters or the situation David was in. But David strengthened, or he encouraged himself. What I find interesting about that, David did not have a Bible. Yeah, <laughs> But David had his God. Yes. And he encouraged himself. He strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. Then David said, to Abiathar, the priest, and Hamalek, son, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? Now let's be real men, folks. Let's just talk to the men, folks. How many of you men would have stopped and took the time after coming home and had a situation like that, would have stopped and took the time and said, okay, God, what shall I do? <laughs> Most men would have immediately went after them yeah. without consulting God. That's right. Most men would have done that. But not David. Not David. David said, according to the word of God, he sought the Lord. He was like, Lord, what shall I do? What shall we do? What shall we do? And if we read further, he was asking whether, whether or not he ought to pursue or recover them, but this is what the Lord told him. The Lord said, he answered him and said, Pursue, David, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. Now let me focus back and get back connected to my dream. After I saw the seashore come upon that gas station and then the seas rage against it and then I hear the voice say, the land has been invaded and, and then I hear the voice say, come with me so I can show you what you need to do. I then saw myself and, and I'm going to call this person's name because, uh, and you'll find out why, but I saw myself in Melvin. Melvin is my brother-in-law. But I saw myself in Melvin being led to an office where we were instructed to sit. Now, I never saw the person that the voice was coming from, but I knew who it was. But anyway, we was led to this office, and we were told to sit in an area at an office that was already prepared for us before we got there. <sighs> See, through the blood of Jesus... The way have already been prepared for us. That's right. But for some reason, the church has fallen asleep yes. on the job. Yes. The church at large. You know, I find, I always found this to be interesting to me. Because I've walked this way as well at some point in my walk with the Lord. You know it was easy for me to be in a church setting like this and tell you all I need to tell you about God. But then when I find myself in Walmart or find myself at Publix or find myself at the base gym, I would like be a little literary, you know, not really wanting to say much about the things of the kingdom of God. And then I learned that I was pretty much obligated to declare as much in those places yeah, yeah. as I do sitting here in this place. Yeah, that's right. I remember one time I was stationed some years ago at, at uh, Tyndall Air Force Base up there in uh, the Panhandle of, of Florida here. Uh, um, and I remember Panama City. After the Lord had dealt with me about this type of thing, you know, that I'm not supposed to just 
declare the kingdom inside of a church setting, but to be prepared to declare no matter where I am. I was at the base gym. We were playing the ball. And this particular young man knew that I was walking with the Lord. And he approached me. And he said, um, Bro, Johnny, he said, Bro, Papa, can you? I got this situation. He told me the situation. He said, Can you pray with me? Or pray for me, he said. Pray for me. I said, Brother, I'm going to do a little bit better and pray for you. I'm going to pray with you right now. And I didn't care who was watching. I didn't care if we held up the basketball game. Because I did not know what this man would probably endure had I not prayed for him right then and there. Amen. You know, what would have happened if I chose not to pray for him and chose to wait some time, my brother? And I used to do this. Yeah, I pray for you. I, I, I pray for you. And I probably would pray for him. But I would have prayed for him either later that night or uh, maybe tomorrow the next day or maybe later that week. But what? Let's just, just, just let me just go here with you. But what if uh, what he was he was gonna have to endure would have taken place before that time I decided to pray? Amen. Is it possible that my delay uh, could have caused him to succumb to a car accident? Oh come on. We have an authority that has been given us as a people. Yes, hallelujah. But somewhere along the line, we have received the lies of the enemy. That's right. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. I, I was sharing with an apostle yesterday morning at the, at, at the breakfast table there. I ran across a young man when I was in St. Louis this past week on, uh, for my job, if you will, if it's your duty there. And when I got at the airport, uh, I had to get a shuttle to go to uh, the hotel. And this young man, uh, when he was asking me for my name, I told him my name, and then he looked at my last name, and he said, ooh. He said, have anybody in your family uh, uh, ever yielded to that? I said, you're looking at one. <laughs> yes. Now, 15 years or so ago, I would not have said that. Yes, amen. See, I know who I am. It's not an arrogance. I just know. Praise God. You know, there's Let me throw this one at you, and then I'm going to go on. And I'll stop meddling. <laughs> you know, now the Word of God tells us that the just are to live by faith. Is that right? That's right. You know, sometimes my faith and your faith will take you to a place of knowing. You no longer need faith for what you know. You just walk in what you know. You're walking what you know, but you're continuing to live by faith. See, I no longer need to really have faith to know that I'm saved. I know it. And because I know it, I behave as such. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me get on back track here. Let me get back here. Let me get back here. Let me keep reading. Anyway, I'm going to go back to the continuance of my dream. But I saw myself in Melbourne, who was my brother-in-law. We were being led to an office where we were instructed to sit at an already prepared table for us to receive from him. You know, that, that reminds me of another dream. I was telling y'all about man, just dream, dream, dream. That reminds me of another dream I had a while back, some years ago. I saw this dream. The best way I can get you to kind of uh, get an image of this here is to look like at a globe, you know. But I saw the earth, and the earth resembled like a, like a globe. You can see all the countries and all that there. And when I saw the earth in that shape, I saw a table rise up out of that earth. And as the table rose up out of the earth, men began to populate or began to come around that table. And then when the men was fixed around that table, Men's on both sides and men's at the end, they all was looking in one direction. It reminded me of the scene that most of us see of the Lord's Supper. But it was all looking in that direction at that one man. And when I came out of the dream, Holy Spirit began to share with me that what he is doing in, in, in the earth is that he's raising up men to include women that are so focused on his son that these men and women would not be moved by what goes on in the earth. 
Yes. See, that now that I think about it, that and this most recent dreams really tie together. Yes, they do. Yes, totally. It ties together. Yes. Isn't it amazing how our father do that? He'll give me one dream almost a year and a half or so ago, and then give me another dream two months ago and tie them together. Hallelujah. 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 But anyway, uh, let me keep going here. But he had prepared us this table for us. You know, let me, uh, I know all you can relate to this here. You know, that kind of reminds me like with my wife when, when she prepares a table for me. Now, when I get to that table, I don't have to do nothing but eat. <laughs> in other words, what I do when I get there, I partake in what my wife prepares for me. And I tell you, she prepares it well. And I, well, you can tell, but she prepares <laughs> it well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew that would get you. Hallelujah. But let me just read this here to you real quick. We need to partake. As we partake at a dinner table that has been prepared for us, we as the people of God need to partake of his wisdom, his understanding, his knowledge, his strength. We need to partake of his might, his peace. And we need to partake by faith of healing. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Share with Apostle yesterday when I was in St. Louis. Most of you know about, well, a month ago, this past Wednesday, I had uh, back surgery. I had, uh, it was laser. And it was only about an hour, ten minutes, a year or so ago, prior to this one, I had back surgery in my thoracic, which, which took about three, about three and a half hours. But this particular one, they had went in there and they, they lasered off certain, some bone chips and, and took some stuff out of whatever. But when I was in St. Louis, I was walking quite a bit, and I began to feel a little something back there. You know, I'm like, oh God. And then the Holy Spirit reminded me of something. He said, son, I reveal to you that you're in me and I'm in you. He said, well, now, why don't you utilize and walk in what I revealed to you? So I said, okay. I said, now, Father, based on the things that you've shown, with, shown me and told me, then by faith, I know I'm healed. I said, and right now, I stand in that place of healing. Because as I stand in that place of healing, I'm actually standing in the Father. Now, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on. I said, so I received that. So I found myself walking throughout that area, particularly we had to go to a place where we was having dinner at that one evening that was part of that conference, and we all had to go. And I walked so much, and then when I got back to the room, I thought, I said, whoa, wait a minute. Normally when I have done this, I'd be hurting. But when I got into my room, I felt no pain. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. No pain. And immediately the word of the Lord came to me. See? <laughs> See, son, I told you. Yes. So it's a matter of us getting to a point to where God will say, See? Yes. I told you. <laughs> it's a matter of us holding on to the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Holding on to the word of God. Not holding on to the word of religion or the word of man. Come on, like, yeah. I've had a lot of religious stuff cut away from me. Amen. Taken out of my life. That was hindering my walk. Yes. That was taught to me by good people. I just didn't know. Hallelujah. Okay, let me get on back over here. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But let's get back to the dream. Now, back to my dream. Holy Spirit revealed to me that the two men in the dream, me, myself, and Melvin, Melvin, my brother-in-law, represented the offices of the apostle and the prophet, because Melvin is an apostle. And I walk in the office of the prophet. You know, these would be a little bit shy of saying that kind of thing. The Holy Spirit broke me. You gotta walk in what he called you to walk in. He informed me that the church has been trying to fulfill this purpose by three of the five offices when all five is required. Yes. Yes. That's right. 
See, the church has been trying to fulfill the call of God by the offices of the teachers, the pastors, and the evangelists. Corinthians 12, 28 says this. And God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers. Hallelujah. Let me get back there. I like this. This is some cool stuff. Third teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administration, varieties of tongues. Then Ephesians 4, 11 puts it this way. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. Now, why would you do that, Father? For the equipping of the saints, yes. for the work of ministry, yes. for the edifying of the body of Christ. Yes. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. To a perfect man, to a perfect man, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in a cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. May I submit to you, the reason why most, you're not all, but most people of God are walking around defeated is because they utilize and only went by the three offices and not the five. Amen. See, it takes the five to perfect yes. us to do what we've been called yes. to do. Yes. It takes all five. Now, I know there's some loonies out there walking yes. in the office of the prophets. Yes. I know that. But there are also some that are walking in the office of pastors. Yes. Isn't it interesting? How they are discard the prophets and the apostles because of a couple of lunatics, but then you accept the lunatic pastors and teachers and evangelists? That's amazing to me. Why is that? Because the enemy has crept in. The enemy has crept in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 16. From whom the whole body joined and knit together by what in, by excuse me by every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share. Every part does its share. Yes. Every part yes. does its share. Every office does its share. Every gift of the spirit does its share. And every part of that fruit of the Spirit does its share. Because you can have all the gifting that Paul said, but if you don't have the very fruit, you're just making a bunch of noise. That's right. Right. See, the gifts and the fruits are to parallel one another. That's why we have ministers that fall. It's because they get so caught up in the gifts and never do anything about the fruit. I remember sharing with the Father some years ago when I was young in ministry. I said, Lord, I don't want to do this thing unless you deal with my heart. Yes. You deal with me. Deal with my character. Yes. Because I don't want it to be said of me that that is a man that was preaching fire from heaven, but then he had an adultery lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That's right. I don't want it to be said of me that that man was preaching with fire from heaven, but he was a robber and a stealer. Mm -hmm. Deal with my character. Right. Thank you. Deal with my character. And he has been graceful to do so. Hallelujah. 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 The church, supposed to have me write this down last night. The church is created to affect A F F E C T. To affect the world. But the church effectiveness, E F F E C T I V E N E S S F N E S S, depends on its relationship with the one 
who created it, it has to be affected AF, F-E-C-T-E-T, T-E-D, by Holy Spirit in order to be effective. Let me say that again. The church has to be affected, A-F-F-E-C-T-E-D, by Holy Spirit in order to be effective. E-F-F-E-C-T-I-D-E. -E. Yes. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. So Holy Spirit has to, in other words, get inside of us yes. and work in us in order us in order for us to accomplish the very purpose that God created us to accomplish. In order for us to accomplish the very call and the task. So it depends on our awareness of who we are and who resides in us. When the church corporately yields to the work of Holy Spirit, the church will work the greater works in the earth. And when the church works the greater works in the earth, it will effectively deal with those invaders. Ephesians 6.12 We wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You could easily say we wrestle, our wrestle is not against flesh and blood, it's against those spiritual invaders. Right. It's against those spiritual invaders. That's why we must live, move, and have our being in God by His Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Because our weapons are not carnal. Yes, yes, yes. But they are mighty. Yes. yes. To the pulling down. They are mighty. Not by might, nor by, oh God, hallelujah, but by my Spirit. We cannot deal with the invaders on our land with our flesh. We must live in the spirit. Amen. We must move in the spirit. Amen. We must have our being in the spirit. Oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It reminds me, and my wife and I are doing real, real well, but I just want to share it. It just reminds me of when we heard about our son's passing. I share this with you about our son passing. He was 29 years old. Back in December. And I remember that morning, I never forget it, and it just does something great in me. Now, we all mourn when we get things, get news like that. Yes. But I don't know, it must have been the third or the fourth day or so. I remember crying out to God. I said, Father, I have many questions. Why this and the other? Father, deal with this thing that I'm feeling. And I heard the voice of the Lord say, Son, do you want me to heal you now? Or do you want me to heal you tomorrow, next month? I said, when do you want it? I said, Father, I need healing now. And I've been different ever since. Amen. It was immediate encouragement. It was immediate comfort. It was immediate strength. You, Lord. Yes. Why? Because I know in whom I reside in. Hallelujah. 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 You know, it, it reminds me of the word of God when, when Jesus was telling his apostles, he said, you know, um, young man, I got to go to a place. He said, in that place where I'm going, I'm going to, there's a place that I'm going to prepare for you. And where I am, you'll be there also. And I, I was going to pause him. I said, at first when I read that, I thought Jesus was messing with my mind. And I thought he might be messing with their mind. Because he said, the place where I am going, I'm already there. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus, you're standing in front of us. Now, how are you going someplace to prepare someplace, and you're there at the same time, and you're still in front of us? The Holy Spirit revealed something to him. He said, the place he was going, the place he was preparing, which the place he was actually already at, was a place in the Father. Yes, hallelujah. See, most people are looking for a, a, a house or something or a mansion. See, I'm not looking for that type of stuff. I just want to find my place. Yes, yes. I have come to understand that if I would just rest in him, yes. 
if I would just rest in him, yes. then I will accomplish all the things that he created me to accomplish in this earth. I'm not waiting to get to heaven. I am doing what he has called me to do right here in the present now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because we have people hurting, my brothers and sisters. Yeah. We have people that are tied up by the enemy. Yeah. And it's up to us. It's up to us. Yeah. We've been given the power and the authority by the Holy Ghost to set them free. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> set them free. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember some years ago, I asked a young man to come to church with me one time. And he was like, well, brother, I don't have no suit. I said, man, you don't need no suit. He said, but you always need a suit. I said, man, I was just raised up that way. I said, I'll tell you what we can do. I said, if you want to go to church in the warm up, I'll put on one. I said, because a suit is just, that's just part of my life. I said, if you want to go to church, brother, I will wear a warm-up with you. <laughs> because it's not about that clothing. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Church, church, church. Hallelujah. 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 Now, back to uh, the historical biblical example laid out for us in this one episode of David's life. Uh, let's go to verse 9 of that particular chapter. Verse 9. Getting something out of this? Amen. I hope so. Hallelujah. I hope so. Holy Spirit has been dealing with me. Verse 9. So David went, he and the 600 men who were with him, and came to Brook Bazaar of Bethsaida, where those stayed who were left behind. But David pursued he and 400 men, for 200 stayed behind, who were so weary that they could not cross the Brook Bazaar. Oh, excuse me. Then they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David. And they gave him bread and he ate. And they let him drink water. And they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. So when he had eaten, his strength came back to him. For he had eaten no bread nor drunk water for three days and three nights. Then David said to him, To whom do you belong? And where are you from? And he said, I am a young man from Egypt servant of an Amalekite, and my master left me behind because three days ago I fell sick. Or some kind of master, he really loved him. <laughs> he made an invasion, we made an invasion of the southern area of the Carathites in the territory which belongs to Judah, and of the southern area of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag with fire. And David said to him, can you take me down to this troop? So he said, swear to me by God that you were neither king of me nor deliver me into the hands of my master. He said, either way, I'll be in trouble. He said, so swear to me. And I will take you down to this troop. And when he had brought them down, there they were spread out over all the land, eating and drinking and dancing. They having some fun. Because they had just did what they did. So they were really, really enjoying what they did. That's just like the enemy. You know, the enemy enjoy when he comes against the church. The enemy enjoys when he strikes people of God with sickness and diseases. He enjoys that. He enjoys that. That's why it's so important for us to combat that with the word of God. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Because he enjoys it. But back at verse 16 again, he said, And when he had brought them down, there they were, spread out over the land, eating and drinking and dancing, because of all the great spoil which they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. Then they would attack them from twilight until the evening of the next day. Not a man of them escaped, except 400 young men who rode on camels and fled. So David recovered all that the Amalekites, he didn't say something, but David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives, and nothing of theirs was lacking, either small or great, sons or daughters, small or anything which they had taken from them, David recovered all. Now, let me just read this to you what the Holy Spirit revealed to me this morning. That was last night. Kind of kind of walk. They kind of just kind of come together sometimes. Mm -hmm. When you're resting in him. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. When you're resting in him. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. The enemy has invaded the land, Holy Spirit says. And the church at large has allowed it to happen. 
Then I, when he said that to me, like David, I imagine, I inquired of the Lord. I said, Lord, well, what shall we do? This is his reply. I was instructed to blow the trumpet in Zion and tell the church to pursue and overtake. Yes. He said, I have given and delegated to the church authority to use the name of my son and the power of my spirit. Yes. And I said, Lord, I say, how do the church pursue? How do we go after the enemy in order to overtake or defeat the enemy? This reply, by abiding in the place that has been prepared for it, which is in me. And from that place, declare, prophesy, speak the word of the Lord from that place. From that place. So now I understand more of why I saw myself and my brother-in-law being led into this office and heard him say, come, because I need to impart into you instructions. Yes. The only place that we can get the proper instructions on how to deal with what has come upon our land is by the Spirit. That's the only place. That is the only place. That's why Jesus told his apostles, he said, look, he said, I gotta go. He said, I can assure you this, there's someone that's coming in my place. And that someone is my spirit. And that someone will guide you. He will guide you. He will lead you. He will instruct you on what you, everything, everything I need to do to accomplish my call as a prophet of God is in Holy Spirit. You know what I used to do? When the Holy Spirit first began to deal with me about the prophetic, I used to look at others. And I used to look at others and think that that's what I had to do. You know, I would look at some prophet or prophetess, and I think the Holy Spirit would use me sometime like this. But I used to look at them sometime, and, and they, was, they used to line people up, and they'd just go one by one and just laying it out. Laying it out. I said, Lord, why am I not doing that? Regularly, like, I mean, Lord, what's going on? What's wrong with me? He said, son, there's nothing wrong with you. Other than you're trying to be like someone else. Mm -hmm. He said, I didn't call you to be like someone else. He said, I called you to be you. He said, after all, the only way you can know anything about anyone is about my spirit. Yeah. Then he shared something with me that really took me back, and it helped. He said, did you not read what was said of John? He said, it was said of John that there was no greater prophet. He said, now you read John's life, and you'll see nowhere where John lined him up. I'm not against it. I'm just letting you know how he dealt with me to free me. He said, but what you will find about John, John would come against what was wrong. That's how he cut me. That's how he made me. That's how he reveals things to me like he does because he'll show me things that he knows he has built in me that ability to deal with what I see in our country and in our world that is wrong. We've been invaded. And what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Will we just continue to come to church? 
have a good time in God? See some people set free and delivered in church? That's great! Yeah. But then we'll leave this building and walk amongst people that are hurting, that need God, and we say nothing? What do I do now? I'm in the airport. I'm like, oh, let's be point someone out. Tell me who I need to talk to. No matter where I go now, tell me who I need to talk to. Tell me, show me someone that I need to, to say something or do something uh, to them or in front of them that will let them know that you are the God that you, who you say you are and that you have created all things. Show me that. Because in this time and age, there are so many religions. And unfortunately, a lot of these other religions are really, really influencing our land more than we are. Yes. Just read newspapers. Look at the laws they're trying to pass. And in some states, they've already passed it. They have passed it because the church at large has not done its job. It's not done its job. It's not done its job. Let us stay. If you don't mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's lift your voice toward heaven. Lift your heart toward God. Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh our God, earlier we, we sung the song, Father, about the rain. Father, you are the only God that can rain down fire. Rain down fire upon every person in this place right yes. now, God. Yes. Touch every person in this place, God. Yes. Cause a burning. Yes. Cause a fire, God. To touch us in such a way that it will burn off complacency. Yes. That it would just burn away complacency and laziness. Yeah. And at the same time, it would burn within us a hunger and a thirst. Come into that place you've already prepared to receive from you what they need to do in the land today. Yes. Not what others have done in the lands of yesterday, but in the land of today. Because those that have gone before us of yesterday, they dealt with it however they thought they needed to deal with things. But Father, we have invaders that has come, and Father, they have come hard. Now Father, we your people, we your people, Father, has been given an opportunity to stand. To stand, to stand in your authority, your power, and your might, and deal with the invaders in our land. Hallelujah. Amen.